How is everybody? Very well. We have about one minute until our official beginning. Thank you all just, for joining us this morning. I just so wanted to at least be able to say hi to everybody. <laughs> Okay, well, it is officially 11 a.m., so I would like to call the order, the meeting to order, Commission on the Status of Women, May 18th, 11 a.m. This is our first ever virtual meeting, and I'm very pleased to see the number of members that have joined virtually. <clears throat> so the first thing that we will do uh, is, does everybody, confirming everybody has a copy of the agenda that was sent yes. out last week? Excellent. So since we're not able to sign in, we will do a roll call. And part of the roll call is making sure that we have um, notation of members that are present. I would like to say a big warm welcome to our newest Commission on the Status of Women member. And if everyone could mute until they speak, that would cut down on the echoing or background noise. At the good news is that the microphone on these platforms are very, very good. So they pick up if you move, if you even move a piece of paper. Um, the bad news is that it is very good and it picks up. <laughs> um, so again, item number three, welcome to Dr. Is it Dr. Wanda Waddell? Yes. Welcome Dr. Wanda Rhonda Waddell as a new Commission on the Status of Women member representing St. Leo University. Uh, Dr. Waddell, would you like to say a few words? Sure. Um, hi, everybody. I'm excited to be joining the group. Um, I'm actually in Gainesville in my car in the parking lot of St. Leo trying to pirate some good uh, internet so I can be a part of this. Uh, where I live is very rural, and when it's cloudy like today, it would have been a real tough go. And the center is closed, so but the internet's great in the parking lot, so bear with my weirdness. I'm just trying to take advantage of the strange COVID conditions that we've got going. Absolutely. And I will say that the storm here in Dade City has uh, booted me out of a couple of virtual meetings for the morning already. So if anybody does have any technical difficulties and um, gets booted out, dial right back in and we'll we'll just keep going. So roll call. All right. I see Morgan. Hi, Morgan. <laughs> Is Johanna officially on leave now? We can't hear you. I see your mouth moving. Well, I will mark you present virtually. Okay, Alicia Guy. Can you unmute and say here? Here. Thank you. Jennifer Sieg, Women Lawyers of Pasco. Unmute and say here if you're present. We're not able to see everybody on the screen at once. Cheryl Pollock, myself here. Gail Armstrong. Kelly Mothershead. Hi, Kelly. Here. Kelly Sin. I know that she had a conflict for another meeting that she was facilitating. Lisa Richardson. Lisa's trying to get on. She's having trouble. She just sent me a text. I told her to log out and try again. Okay, thank you. I will keep her blank for now. Dr. Rhonda Waddell, we heard your welcome and thank you. Nancy Daughtery has officially resigned and there will be a um, process to identify a new 
Metropolitan Ministries representative, but we did receive her resignation last week. Jean Nathy. If you're on the call, Jean, can you unmute and say here or present? Teresa Foster. Rosario Torres. Can you unmute and say present? I am here. Hello. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Summer Robertson. And Lauren Maselli. Lauren, are you here? I see. Yeah, I can you hear me? Now I can. Excellent. Okay. Can All you right. guys see? No, we cannot. We see a black I screen. I don't know why I have my camera on and it says that it's on. On. Um, should I call back in from my cell phone? Because I know we, we said we were supposed to be on video. Sure. Sure. Okay. But I'll I'll log back in in just a second. Thank you. Lauren, you might need to um, update your uh, WebEx on your on your laptop and, and you might be able to use your phone too, but I had to do that. My camera didn't work before as well. All right. So let's see if we have a quorum. With Lauren, we have a quorum, I think. No, we don't. We're at seven. One, two, three. If Lisa four, gets in, we'll have a quorum. Five, six, seven. Correct. So really, you know, if any decisions are made or any recommendations are made for a decision, we would not be able to proceed without a quorum. However, the meeting can proceed. Correct, Kelly? This is really my first Rodeo. Yes, the, the meeting can proceed. We just can't vote anything on anything and we can't even approve the minutes until okay. we have a quorum. So, but I think if Lisa can get in, we'll have a quorum. Okay. All right, Lauren, you're back with us. Hello, good morning. Okay, you can see me now? Yes. Okay, I'm back. And has there any, is anybody else on the call, on the meeting that has joined since I did roll call? We're trying to determine if we have a quorum. This is Todd from IT. No one else has joined. And Morgan, I'm sending someone over to assist you with your microphone issue. They should, he should be over there in a minute. Okay. Thank you, Todd. Okay. Well, keep us posted, Kelly, if Lisa does join. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Todd, I know you can see as well. Thank you. Okay, so um, now we move to public comment. And if I recall correctly, the uh, chat is turned off. Correct, Todd? That is correct. And you do not have anyone signed up for public comment today. Okay, thank you very much. So we will move forward uh, with that. And then... Um, I know that you all received the minutes. However, we're unable to approve the minutes until we have a quorum of eight people. We are currently at seven. Okay, so we're gonna move on to old business. And the first item on old business is the Empower Conference, which was on March 6th. Please, uh, those of you that were able to attend, I know that we had the tabling of the Commission on the Status of Women set up and several people rotated through there. Please share any updates that you would like the group to hear about. You can raise your hand, unmute, and I can recognize you to speak. I'll just say we did have the table set up. We had several members rotate through the table. 
Um, I think that the event went really well. It was well received. Um, I think that it was great that we participated. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Kelly. It was very well attended. I don't think there were any empty seats in the auditorium and it was truly an empowering event. And it was very nice that um, we were recognized at the event uh, towards the end. And I think we did have that posted. Johanna may have posted that or Kelly may have posted that to our website, our Facebook site. Next item is the rolling plastic container. We utilize those items at the meeting and the question is where is it so that we can centralize its location with the county? I um, was there and I left it with, um, I've forgotten her name. I think it's uh, Rosario. Okay. Rosario, and do you have the, do you have the uh, kids? Yes. Yes, I have the things, yes. Okay, thank you. So what is the recommendation on where we should locate, keep that located so that we have centralized access? I think that it was previously by with Johanna, but not for any other reason than she ordered the items on our behalf and had them. Kelly, after the What Women Want, session last year did we return them to the county on purpose or what was the process i think we did just because it was a central location to keep them there because even if joanna's joanna's not there there's someone else available to get them okay right versus if it's with a member that needs to you know has an emergency or something comes up at a member's home it's going to be difficult to get it so if we can keep them there it's centrally located even if it's not johanna somebody else can get them for us from there Okay. Morgan, is that okay with the county that we can centrally locate uh, the Commission on the Status of Women, Public Relations, Information, and Supplies? She might not be able to hear us. This is Catherine Starkey. What was the question? The, hi, hi, Commissioner Starkey. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. So we were just trying to figure out if we can keep our Commission on the Status of Women PR supplies at a central location with the county. It's a little rolling cart kit. Yeah, what is there, where, where, where is it now? It is with one of the commission members and previously it was uh, with Johanna. Okay, um, where do you wanna keep it? I'm sure I can find a place for it. I think if the liaison, um, J Johanna or the liaison in her absence is Morgan, if they have a location in their vicinity that we would be able to access, that would be ideal. Well, M Morgan's office is over on the west side. So what if we, if, don't, would, if you wanted in a central place, maybe I could find a place to keep it over there at the utility building. Is that more convenient? I think, I mean, I think it's okay if it's in the west side, as long as whoever is able to access it is associated in some capacity with the, the council, even if it's in your office and your team knows that when we need it, you know, where it is. All right, well, I, I know for sure there's, well, I'll have to have Morgan check, but I don't know where we would have space in my office. I'm trying to get us moved out of our offices so we have more space, but, um, Okay we'll, okay, we'll work on that. We, yeah, I'll, we, I'll handle that with Morgan. Okay, I don't know why she's not you. on. She told me she was getting on. So. She's on, but she's having some voice um, audio technical difficulties. We see her face, but she's not able to be heard. So she is on and she's smiling Mor at us. Morgan, unclick your microphone. She she has, ma'am. She's, she's currently trying to help one of the members get in and she's having microphone problems. So I've sent someone over to help her. And she's also trying okay. to help one of the members get on. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So uh, I know Summer is not on the call, but um, I'll just note that in my comments here so that we'll we'll be able to summarize the meeting. So Cheryl, what we have, I guess we have to summarize that that resolution with um, the fact that Rosario can hold on to it until she hears from Morgan. Yes. I see Rosario shaking her head. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, fine. All right. 
And as uh, Kelly said, it's just good that if it is with the county and you know someone needs it, then it's it's easy to be able to track that down. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it was with a member and say they were out of town and we needed it, we wouldn't be able to access it. But the county has more uh, people that are able to give us access. Thank you very much, Commissioner Starkey. Sure. So the next item of the agenda under uh, 7C is the presentation to the Board of County Commission on our work program. We were scheduled to conduct this in March. And as we know, that meeting was canceled. And so the discussion is whether or not we want to provide the update virtually or wait to do it in person. I welcome recommendations from the commission at this time. Uh, this is Alicia Guy. Um, I Virtually is not a bad idea because we don't know when um, things are gonna become stable with the pandemic. Can I just add that maybe if we at least could summarize it virtually with them and then maybe go into more depth when we're able to do it in person? Yeah, so we do have a written uh, summary that I might have been in the packet back in March because remember we had to submit that in advance. Um, so Commissioner Starkey, do you recall seeing that? I know it was two months ago. Uh, yes, um, the, the, if you did it virtually, it would be, I don't know how it is if you have you know 15 different people um, I don't I don't think you you get seen. I think you only get heard. That's fine. Um, yeah, you you call in and um, I think that's how it works. It's, and you have okay. to do it ahead, you know, do it ahead of time. So uh, it's more, guys. I can tell you guys from when the Pasco EDC's done presentations to the BOCC, the county has to actually send you the invitation once we're on the agenda and then they'll allow only one speaker. We, like we wouldn't all be able to, we could watch it live on YouTube for the rest of it. But like if Cheryl was our speaker, she would give the presentation. That way she has the ability to go back and forth or screen share with them. So anytime okay. you do like a PowerPoint, the county has it, the agenda coordinator, and then you have to also have it just in case their system goes down so that you can show the commissioners. But then okay. we would all watch. But for the resolution portion, like Commissioner Starkey said, we wouldn't be able to obviously I'll be seen or take photos. Okay, I think that's acceptable. I mean, at this point, I think that, you know, it is a reflection of our work program for 2019 and um, delaying it any further wouldn't change it, if you know what I mean. So I am, I'm fine with uh, speaking on our behalf and asking to be on the invitation for the June or July meeting, wherever we can fit. Any objections to that? Are we still don't have a quorum, so we're not voting? <laughs> oh, no, you forgot we're not voting. <laughs> I think Morgan's on the phone with Lisa trying to get her in now, so we might end up having a quorum by the end. See yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you. Well, we'll keep moving just so we're, um, you know, keeping on task. So item D, the resolution of the celebration of the 100th anniversary of women's rights. Again, that was um, on the March 24th meeting agenda and it was going to be read uh, before or after the work program presentation. So if we are able to be added to the June or July, one of the meeting agendas, would it be acceptable to agree that we do this um, virtually as well? I for one, I don't see why not. Okay. I need to interrupt you for a second. Lisa, can you hear us? I sure can. Okay, Lisa's on the phone. I, we can't get her in via video, but she is on via phone. Excellent, thank you. So does, well, that mean we, been, does that mean we- I have been here since 10.55. It's just you guys can't see me. It would okay. not allow me to go in as a panelist, only an attendee. So does that mean we can't still can't vote because we can't see her? That's a question for the county. I don't know. You, you should. We have in other meetings allowed as long as they're joined via WebEx. Okay. And on the phone via WebEx, they are allowed to vote and you would have a quorum. 
And we now have a point. When I called in from my home computer last week, it was perfect. I had no issues. Now I'm in my office at the college, and I can't, it, it's not working the same way. Understood. So um, with that being said, I would like to divert our attention back to the minutes. We were uh, waiting for a and I would like uh, us to approve the March 2nd meeting minutes. A motion to approve them. This is Kelly, Mother said. Thank you, Kelly. Do we have a second? This is Alicia Guy. I'll second. Thank you, Alicia. Great. Okay, so back to item 7D. The recommendation was to conduct the uh, presentation of the celebration of 100th anniversary of women's right to do that virtually right after the work program whenever we can get on the agenda. And I will defer to Morgan to uh, navigate that process simply because I know that there's a timetable involved with the staff and whether or not we would be able to get on the next agenda or it may be in uh, the second meeting or into July. Okay, any objections to C and D conducting virtually? Okay. Cheryl, can you hear me now? Yes, is that Morgan speaking? Yes, okay, I just wanted to check. Thank Excellent. you. Awesome. Okay, next item is item 7E on the old business, and that is the uh, vice chair due to Suzanne Legg's resignation. And I know Jean is not currently on the call unless she has joined in the last few minutes. I did not hear uh, directly from anyone else regarding a conflict today, but I did. Jean, are you on the call? No, okay. Okay, so I don't know. Do we have the election without her? <laughs> I know that she volunteered. She volunteered, and is there anybody else that was interested, or is it just her? It's just her. And I think we can probably go ahead and vote if we want to vote her in since she did volunteer. It wasn't like somebody else nominated. Correct. Okay, well, if if we can vote, um, if anybody would like to, is is that a motion? Or is that just a vote? What is that? All right, so this this is Kelly, and I'll make a motion that we accept her as the vice chair. Thank Captain you, Jean Nappy. May I have a second? This is Alicia Guy, and I will second that. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay. We probably need a show of hands in favor to make sure everyone's in favor. Is everyone in favor? Show of hands or, or yay if you're not visual. Any objections? Okay, so move. Thank you. Okay, so now we're moving into the new business and item number eight. We had a discussion at our last meeting regarding a uh, community awareness fundraiser luncheon or breakfast, possibly in October. And based on the current um, restrictions with gatherings, the planning process would probably take four to five months. And I am bringing it to the commission to discuss whether we want to table the planning of this event, in other words, postpone it due to the pandemic. Uh, this is Lauren. I don't, honestly, sadly, I don't see how we would move forward with it at this point. We don't, we didn't have a location, but you know, with the schools being closed or the hotels, all these different places, they're really not even booking events right now. The EDC has been, we've been working on what we're going to do with all of our events that we had to postpone or fall events as well. And I just, I don't see how we'd be able to safely plan for something like that, um, considering all of the current guidelines. I absolutely agree with Lauren. And I think too, like she said, everybody's trying to, to reschedule events that they had previously planned. And I think that 
even even if it were safe, I think that it's still going to be difficult to schedule a new event with everyone trying to reschedule events that were already planned. So I think it's probably in our best interest to wait until after the first of the year. Thank you for your comments. Any other comments? So is it safe to say that we do want this to be a fall time event? And so therefore we would commence planning in winter of this year to pick a date for fall of 2021? Would we be against a spring event? Why, I can't remember why we were trying, I mean, I know why we were trying to do fall, but is there a reason that it has to be tied to the fall? No, not at all. I think it's so, totally up to the commission. Because maybe now we we can still use this time to do a little bit of planning over the next few months, like pre-planning maybe. Right. And get it a little bit, our ideas sorted out a bit more on it now that we'll have extra time. Okay. So if that's the case, um, any, I, I don't think it necessarily needs a vote, but it's really a discussion because we had nothing set in stone. And so the subcommittee was to make recommendations to the commission. And I, I know that Summer was heading up that subcommittee and who else was on that subcommittee? I, I was on that committee, but okay. we haven't, we didn't get to do anything because the week we were trying to schedule was when we all went into remote work and then the, right. Uh, Shut down so correct i remember yeah. vaguely vaguely <laughs> yeah i think you were on the email thread to try and join us but no so we never got to get together after everything okay so as the sole representative of the subcommittee lauren would you mind taking the information back and um reigniting that subcommittee so that we could determine next steps the goal was sure to i'll talk um kind of a outline of a a recommendation plan for the commission to review. Yes, I'll talk with Summer and see, um, cause I know with her line of work, obviously right now she's swamped right. um, with everything. So I'll talk with her and see when we think we can start that up. Okay. And there were some questions about the requirements to take meeting minutes during the event planning meetings due to the sunshine law. And Johanna did send out the notes from that meeting. So we do have that. And I think that it would be good to just refer back to that. I don't remember exactly what it said, but I think that we do have to keep minutes. And um, the other question was whether or not community representatives could participate. And I think that the summation was no initially so that the um, planning would be with the members of the commission. And then as the task and uh, volunteer assignments were identified after the plan was developed, we could include a broader community representation. Okay. So Lauren, we'll take that back to the subcommittee. And um, we do have our June meeting that is already scheduled for June. Uh, I think it's June 2nd. And so if we have a any type of update, I'm not saying that you have to have a full plan, but at least if we have an update on top three location recommendations and maybe three potential dates to consider for spring of 2021, that would be a good place for us to start. Our next meeting is June 1st, Cheryl. Sorry, June 1st. Thank you. June 1st. Okay. All right, so uh, item B is really um, just an FYI that Elizabeth Blair from the Pasco County Attorney's Office um, in attendance to answer any Sunshine Law questions we may have. Hi, Elizabeth, thank you for being with us today. Hello, hello everyone, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. 
Um, yeah, Johanna had asked that I attend this meeting. Should you have any questions? Earlier today, I had emailed to uh, Johanna, which I believe it's made it to you, Morgan, is uh, a, a Word document that just has a brief summation of the Sunshine Law and some other considerations for public officials, which you are because you're appointed by the Board of County Commissioners to be on this board, on this commission. So there's just information for you. I think Morgan will be sending that out to all of you. And you can certainly reach out to me if you ever have any questions directly in the Pasco County Attorney's Office. I am working remotely, but I have someone in the office every day who can send things to me should you reach out to the office. Does anyone have any questions at this point in time? Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Lisa, I know we can't see you, but if you have a question, um, you're welcome to speak now. Thank you. I do not have any questions. Excellent. Thank you. So the next question or the next item is access to the Commission on the Status of Women Facebook page. I know that Summer and myself were granted access. Uh, are there any other fun loving social media people who would like to have access to keep us connected to the outer world? <laughs> I would. Alicia, thank you. Anybody else? Great. Guys, I gotta sign off. I'm at my meeting. Okay, thank you, talk Commissioner. You later. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. All right, so the next meeting is um, just the update that Johanna will be on maternity leave and Morgan, who is representing uh, the county today with us, will and Danny will be assisting from Commissioner Starkey's office and um any any comments morgan anything you want to share with us any wish list <laughs> i'm all set thank you okay uh, and so typically we have summer that um does the minutes and so since summer is not with us today um i will work with morgan on recapturing it it's kind of hard to moderate and take notes at the same time so we'll we'll work on that is there anybody else that is willing to take a look at them before they're finalized if you're happen to be taking some notes right now. I didn't take any notes, but if you want me to look it over, I can. Thank you. Sure, I, I took a, a few notes while I could when I was could hear the things I did so I can add those to it too. Okay. Thank you. This All meeting right. is also being recorded and I will send it out to Morgan at the end. This way she can also get notes off of that as well. Oh, fabulous. We might get spoiled with this. <laughs> you know, I thought they said, I thought he said uh, that we could record it. So that's good. That is good. Well, we will have very good minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder, Todd. Okay. So we did have some assignments from the March 2nd meeting, and I am just going to run through those and see if there's any discussion or any additions. Uh, Johanna was having name badges made for Jean, Jennifer, Summer, Rhonda, and Teresa. And the fact that we're not in person, we can't distribute those. So Morgan, do you have an update on whether or not those were created? I'm sorry, which ones were they? The first part I didn't hear. The name badges for? Yes. Okay. I have them. Okay. Joanna gave them to me before she left. So it's up to you guys. I can mail them out or we can wait until the next in person meeting. What is the pleasure of the commission? Would you like them mailed out if you're representing the commission in any capacity in the community or even if you want to wear it during the virtual meetings? I can wait for mine. Okay. I can wait to Shronda. All right, so we have two waits <laughs> and the others are not on the call. Thank you. And then Jean, who's not on the call, uh, the meeting right now, she was going to volunteer to write a article for the local women's magazine and just really help generate the level of awareness about the commission. So I will be happy to follow up with Jean regarding that. I was interviewed by a local women's magazine, but I don't know that the article ever made it to the magazine during all of this either. Okay. So I'll try to reach out and see what's going on with that too. 
That would be great. Thank you, Kelly. Let's note that in the minutes that do you, was it the same one, the Florida Women's Magazine? That, yes, um, it was the same one. Okay, is that Jet Hall? Yes. Okay, great. Did you cover the commission or was it just other general stuff? It was specifically about the commission. Excellent, okay, excellent. If you could follow up and provide her an update on that at the next meeting, that would be great. I will. She interviewed me quite a while ago, but it never it never made it to the magazine with everything else going on. Um, or at least I haven't seen it, so I will follow up with her. Okay, perfect. The next item is the Greater Pasco Chamber of Commerce. The Professional Women in Business meets third Wednesdays of the month. Now, Correct me if I'm wrong, is that part of the WOW and the WOW 2, or is that completely separate? That's a different chamber. So that's the Greater Pasco Chamber, but the North Tampa Bay Chamber has the same type of thing, and that's the WOW. Um, the North Tampa Bay Chamber has WOW, which is Women of Wesley Chapel, and then they have WOW 2, which is Women of Wesley Chapel, Trinity, and Odessa. And then the Greater Pasco Chamber has the uh, Professional Women in Business. So we would like representation at that meeting to be able to uh, not only represent the commission, but also talk about the work of the commission. Is there anybody that's currently fully engaged and can serve dual roles if they're already representing their business? So the, um, the North Tampa Bay Chamber, wow, I actually was the host of the Trinity Odessa WOW meeting. I just turned that over to a new host, but I do attend those. Okay. Is there anybody that currently attends the Professional Women in Business? Is there anybody that would be interested in attending? Hi, Rosario. I can. Oh, hi, Rosario. Hi, how are you? I can do that. You can. Okay, yes. excellent. So we're noting that Rosario will represent the now do you have to be a member of the chamber to attend so, women yes you're only allowed to attend i think twice and then you have to be a member so i am a member of both chambers okay so right. um rosario maybe i can send you as part of my team <laughs> okay <laughs> i take my place okay got it and Thank just you. for clarification kelly because it's been a while since i've attended well you can only be a speaker if you're a member correct no, actually, most of their speakers are not members. Oh, okay. So good. we can get on the we can get on the list to be a speaker and maybe to be able to uh, to speak uh, for a few minutes about our commission and what we do in the in the county. My recommendation was that we get on the list to be a speaker at all three. I think so. That that would um, really... So contact Hope Kennedy. It used to be Alan, but it's Hope Kennedy at the North Tampa Bay Chamber. For both of the wow groups and then i'm not sure the contact you could contact tim mclean at greater pasco chamber and he can put us in touch with who's actually um scheduling speakers for the professional women's group okay so rosario will take the lead on the west pasco uh professional women in business and um are you currently attending the wow too kelly Yes, we okay. actually there's actually a coffee um, a virtual this week on Wednesday at 9 okay. a.m. Can we ask you to take the lead on mm -hmm. trying to get on the any future agenda to talk sure. give update about the commission and then for the wow um, who attends that one? So I don't. So right now it's all virtual. So it'd be easy for anybody that wants to attend. Okay. Right now it's I can. Easier. I can. I can ask Hope about attending that one. Yeah. We are. I mean, by virtue of the business, we, the commission may not be a member, but my company is a member, so I can. I can right. wear two hats. Perfect. Okay. Let the minutes reflect that, so that um, I don't forget. <laughs> okay, Simpson Breast Center. The um, mention is the Simpson Breast Health Center at Advent Health Zephyr Hills is the only dedicated breast care center in East Pasco County. Does anybody remember what the focus or discussion around that was? Were we trying to do something specific in October with them? 
Breast Health Month, or I don't remember what this was about. I think Jean Nathy was just trying to list those organizations that were specific for women that we could participate, to try okay. to get involved with. Okay. Can a commission member volunteer to follow up with them and determine if there's anything? Um, I mean, I know with the uncertainty of the pandemic, we don't know what may change, but right now we do know that October is Breast Health Month and if there's anything that we can do to advocate for um, the health of women as a commission. Cheryl, I'd be happy to connect with Amanda Magger. This is Lisa Richardson. Thank you, Lisa. And I know that um, one of the other areas that was brought up was just the increase in domestic um violence and domestic challenges with our families and so if there's i can follow up with lisa um, i'm sorry kelly sin personally and just see if there's an opportunity for us since we did choose um you know uh, domestic violence as our focus for this year what we can do collectively to rally our community in support of some of their needs i think that would be great then i also think that as in regards to the volunteer way i've been working a lot with them and one community now as well okay. um, because they're feeding a lot of the students that aren't getting you know students are getting a lot of lunch meals but not a lot of other meals and we have in particular since i work for pepin academies as well we have a lot of students that are, we're a title one school who's are not eating when they're home right they're used to eating we, we send food home with them on the weekends when they're in school so i've been working a lot with one community now and with the volunteer way maybe it might be nice for us maybe to to pick an evening or a morning that they do distribution and we can be the volunteers for the distribution on that day Oh, great. Um, Rotary Clubs have been doing that. Um, Pepin Academies has been doing that. We've had a few different organizations doing that. It might be good for us as a commission to do that collectively and pick a day or two that we could get together and maybe be the volunteers for that day. So that's yeah, a, that's a two hour commitment. That's a wonderful idea, Kelly. And I think that that's the kind of, you know, collective effort that I was thinking because we know that the people that are either running those or initiating those can get tapped out really quick. I mean, I know from a healthcare standpoint with us um, preparing to do drive through testing that we intend to circulate the staff and not send the same team out, um, mm -hmm. you know, to be in the elements because it is it is getting to summer and it's it's very challenging. So thank you. So maybe talk to Alice Delgado at okay. the Volunteer Way or uh, Patty Templeton at One Community Now. Okay. Can you, I can speak to Alice and you can take Patty and then let's bring okay. back a recommendation to the commission. If, sure. you, if you can get the information prior to the um, development of the agenda, which is usually two weeks out, then at least I can put it on the agenda and we can take some action so that we don't lose another month um, deliberating. Okay. Are any other commission members um, wanting to mention another connection or community resource that ties to our mission? that we could help. Hello, uh, this is Rhonda. I uh, just wanted to kind of go back to, to the article that's being written for the local um, magazine and wanted to add that uh, we have a journal that's called Interdisciplinary Insights and it's open to anyone to write for it. So can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Uh, okay, um, anyway, if anyone would like for me to try to help write an article that we submit to this journal, it goes out nationally, and we could, you know, come up with a way to highlight what the commission does and how it connects with the community. What was the name of the journal, Dr. Waddell? It's, it's called interdisciplinary insights it's with the college of education and social services and it is open to anyone that wants to write an article and uh, we have another edition coming out in june but the following one will probably be in the fall so we would have some time to get together and and look at what you how you'd want to write the article what would be the scope of it so but I throw it out there because I think it would highlight what, I mean, you're doing some amazing things in a lot of different areas and 
Um, I think it would be a nice article to the journal. Excellent. That is a terrific offer and a great idea. And so we'll put that on this list. And um, I think that we can assign or anybody can volunteer to work with you on that. That'd be great. Okay, the floor is open. Are there any other items or um, suggestions for discussion before we wrap up and officially adjourn the meeting? Lisa on the phone, I know we can't see you, but you're welcome to speak. Thank you, Cheryl. Yes, I'm here. Um, the only other thought, of course, I'm not sure if it's appropriate that I bring this up, but I did um, want to mention that the college has been had in place and it began in early March a support of our students' emergency relief fund and donations have been accepted in any amount. To date, we have raised close to $30,000 and it has allowed us to provide emergency relief to students. Primary needs that we have found that they have been facing is food insecurity. Yes. So I don't know if there's any chance the commission might wish to make a small donation. Of course, they would be listed in our Perspective magazine. And if they wanted to earmark that for women only, um, you know, that would also be acceptable. Lisa, is there a link or a, um, uh, I guess a form if individuals wanted to do that? I don't know that we have um, resources to make it collectively. I would have to follow up and get a better understanding of that from Morgan. I can happily send an email to Morgan. The bottom of my email signature currently has a link to it. Of course, it's on the college's website as well. But I can, if it's easiest, I could send send that information. Um, it's Morgan who's sitting in for Johanna. Is that correct? That is correct. I could send that to Morgan, and then if she wanted to disperse to the group, if any individuals, again, any amount um, is extremely meaningful. We have been taking the money raised, and we have been purchasing $200 gift cards. And in the past couple of weeks, we have been able to assist 184 PHSC students who have reached out to the assistant dean at their respective campus with um, you know, very severe uh, financial challenges as a result of the pandemic. Excellent, thank you. Yes, I think it would be good to, to send that. And um, in reality, you know, people that have been furloughed or laid off, even if they apply for unemployment or um, food SNAP benefits through access, the delay and the turnaround time is significant. Uh, we've seen an influx of people coming through Premier's door seeking assistance for um, those areas, and it's like a six, four to six weeks delay. And so and the beauty that. of this is by them receiving a two hundred dollar Visa gift card, they could use it as they needed to use it. It could be to purchase a webcam for their laptop. It could be get a vehicle fixed it you know like I say we did know that 14% of the 555 students who responded to a survey that we put out in early March indicated food insecurity as being their number one issue thank you very much Lisa any other comments or reflections from the Commission in regard to how we can respond or or what your thoughts are? Okay, so Lisa will send that to Morgan and Morgan can send it out. Well, thank you. I would say that this has been a very um, smooth operation, thanks to Todd and Morgan. And, um, you know, we appreciate you all participating with our first virtual commission on the status of women meeting 
And I would like to officially call the meeting um, adjourned and um, duly noted at the end of your agenda, it says that our Monday, June 1st meeting will be at 2.30. You should have received an invite, a WebEx invite. The meeting will be at 11. So please note that correction. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you all. If there are no further statements or questions, the meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you, Bye, Cheryl. everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Morgan. Bye-bye. Thank you, Cheryl.